Everybody loved my dad uh, because he just had this great sense of humor and he just had a way of connecting with people and he was uh, uh, diagnosed with congestive heart failure. Well, you just met Johnny Rollins and his dad, Bob. And that's what this episode is about. By the way, excuse me, Memento Mori. Have you been using that? Have you been using that with people in Memento Mori? Because always going to ask, what does that mean? Remember you're mortal. Remember you're dying. They're going to go, that's so sick, and go, no, it's not, baby. That keeps you, that keeps you alive. That keeps you right there in front of you. You've got to live. And that's what this whole series is about, about how we get through grief so we are alive, we can move through, and how humor and laughter helps us. This episode is just Johnny Rollins. And it's about Johnny Rollins and what he experienced with his father on the last two weeks his father was alive. Funny stories, great stories. Because a lot of people want to know, how do you do it? How is it possible? It's very sad. Of course it's sad when you know somebody you love and care about is dying. But Bob Rollins is going to give you the insight, the joy, and the love of how to do it. Uh, the last couple of weeks of his life, and he was really starting to have some problems, and they, the hospice people were coming over and giving him the bed baths. And he was getting stiff in bed and stuff, and, and I said, you know, Dad, maybe we ought to try and give you a shower. And he says, well, do you think you can do it? I said, yeah, we can do it. So we uh, kind of get him out of bed, and he, he kind of props up against the bed, and he can stand up barely, and, and I help him strip down, and he just looks down, and he says, God Almighty, can you believe this is my body? I mean, that I ended up looking like this? <laughs> and I mean, because his whole body is drooping, you know. And, uh, but I got him stripped naked, wheeled the wheelchair around. He's got his little oxygen thing, and, and it had a real long cord on it so that we could go from room to room. He had an oxygen generator, really, in his room. So uh, I start wheeling him over there, and I went, you know, if I'm going to put you in the shower, I'm going to have to get in the shower, too. So I strip down naked. And, you know, it only makes sense and start wheeling him from his room through the living room. Well, off to the side is the kitchen and, and the main door that opens up. So we're wheeling through the living room, headed for the bathroom in that hot shower. And all of a sudden the door opens, yoo-hoo, and it's cousin Sue. <laughs> and she opens the door and looks in and there I am standing naked and there's dad sitting in the chair. And we just both kind of look at her and she goes, I guess this is a bad time, isn't it? <laughs> Turned around and ran. I don't even know if we ever talked to her again. He got sicker and sicker and uh, had more and more strokes. Uh, and I ended up being his caretaker. And I spent the last two weeks of his life with him. And a time when you'd think would be tragic, those were probably the best two weeks of my life. I remember asking him if he was scared. And he said, and, and he was prone, he was on his back. And we had him kind of propped up on pillows. And, but he, I'm sitting at the end, of, I'm laying on the end of the bed. And uh, so he was kind of looking down, you know. He goes, no. And I said, are you scared? And he goes, no, I'm not scared. But I'll tell you what, John, it all goes by in the blink of an eye. And I thought, how profound is that? I mean, because here's a man who uh, grew up in Lawrence, Kansas, went to college, joins the Navy. He's at Pearl Harbor when it's attacked, the Battle of Normandy, gets out, lives the dream life of the 50s and the 60s, beautiful family, wonderful. All we did was laugh. I mean, that was our entire family was based upon having a great time and finding something to have fun with. And he lives this great life, and all of a sudden, here he is at 84 years old, on his back, on his deathbed, and he's going, wait a minute, I'm not done. I'm just getting started. He had a reason to get up every morning. He loved life. I asked Johnny when I interviewed him, that moment with your dad, did that change your life? Did it change my life when he said that? Um, I haven't been the same since. How could you be? I, I mean, to hear that from, you could read it, you could see it on TV, somebody else say it or whatever, but when you're there with undoubtedly the most important person in your life and you hear them say that, it is a life lesson beyond compare. The most sacred ground and loving ground will ever be in our lives is on with the deathbed of a loved one. And you may think, how is humor and laughter possible? I never first thought how it was possible. 
And then Johnny Rollins told me how it was and what his dad did. Dad just kind of looked around the room, you know, and I mean, he was kind of looking down like this and, and he kind of smiled and he says, what a wonderful family I have. And by this time, we're just all, you know, everybody's crying and I'm standing at the end of the bed kind of rubbing his feet and, and, uh, and he actually said, uh, you know, I, I know it's time to go, but I just don't know how to open the door. And I said, you know, Dad, it, that's okay. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, when, you know, we're selfish, we don't want you to go, but when it's your time, then, you know, let go. That's all right. And everybody's crying and everything. And I, I said, you know, Dad, is there, you know, is there anything you need at all? And we're thinking the moment has arrived. And he kind of looks at me, and there's this long, long pause. And he said, oh, duels. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what? Said, I would like an oh, duels. And I said, Dad, don't you want like a regular beer or something? And he goes, no, they told me it would be bad for my health. <laughs> Amazing, funny, sacred, loving. And just what a great memory. Every time Johnny tells that story, he lights up and laughs because he remembers that's dad. That's the way my dad was. And that's how you do it. You know, some of us are blessed that we have those moments. I do. I have those moments with, with, with my dad. But some people don't. And so maybe you can see how it's possible or when they do happen, how you can grab them and hold on to them. The next episode coming up is with a family, the Mahoney's, and their dad and husband, Bill Mahoney, leads the family all the way through it, and he's the one dying. Now, usually I sign out the, the classes and say this, no, no, no. There is nothing that I could ever touch and say the brilliance of how Johnny Rollins is going to tell you what he learned from his father. I think Dad taught me in, in a, a, a kind of an indirect way that life is a collection of absurdities. You know, the things that we worry about and the things that, that affect us and, and all of that mean nothing when you're on your deathbed. And, and really, they probably mean nothing anyway. And, and Dad's sense of humor and not taking things, I mean, he would worry and he would have his concerns and stuff like that. But there was always a different way to look at it, and there was always a bright side. Always a bright side.